Welcome everyone to Marion's World and as a change from stitching you're going to see a knitting tutorial today and I wanted to start just by showing you a couple of pieces of knitting. So um, I've just cast on for Fair Isle and I know that I do one or two things that are different. Um, I'm sure there are other people who do do them but I think it's not quite as common and so I thought it would be handy to show you. So firstly this was the very first garment I made for myself when I was maybe about 19. Um, up till then I'd just knit for dolls, I'd knit for blankets, I'd knit a scarf and I was married, I'd just got married and for once I had a little bit of money to actually go and buy some nice wool and in those days you could get it put away so you could go to the knitting shop and buy your have your wool put away with your name on and then you could just buy one or two balls each week which made it a more affordable way of going to get the yarn which was still in those days quite an expensive thing if you wanted some real wool so this is real wool and that is what I did. I went and had my balls of wool put away and so it's a fair isle, it's a traditional pattern and I taught myself from a book even though I could know how to knit. I hadn't done fair isle before and so you can see I've stranded it which is just how the, uh, people t teach you to do it. it I, I altered the pattern straight away. In fact I can go and get the book. These are the first books I bought on knitting and this was the one, you can see how doggy eared it is. Traditional knitting from the British Isles and I can show you the picture of this one. You can see the age of the book by the photographs. So there's the cardigan there. This is another, I have a few of these. These are original Alice Starmore books but they're from so long ago. But these are, in fact, look, it's a... I didn't have much money to buy things. I think I just must have thought I was lucky. It's got Sunderland Public Libraries discarded stock, 40 pence. So I'll, I'll have thought my birthday would come buying a book like that for 40, for 40 pence. And it's got lots of really traditional patterns in, traditional Guernseys. I do have another couple of hers with um, Swedish and Nordic knitting as well. So that once I started to knit in the round and learned how to steek, I then sort of started to teach myself all these different ways of going on. So I do knit right-handed because I was taught right-handed because my grandma couldn't work out how to teach me left-handed and I must have been only about six or seven at the time. However, this is just one that I've brought as an example. So this is a Marie Woolen. Um, it's a sage dress. But the thing I've brought it for is to show you the inside. So the inside of this dress is so beautiful because there's no strands anywhere. In fact, I don't think... And in that cardigan I'm wearing now, it's not stranded. And I've been doing this for years. And I learned how to do it from a book, I think. I can't actually remember now, it's so long. But I'm going to show you. And I'll show you the, show you the knit way, which is the way I do it, because I knit in the round. But I also know how to do it pearl ways as well. So for those of you who don't use circular needles and you want to still do a no-strand fair isle, I can show you how to do the pearl row on the back. I hope. <laughs> it's, a while since, it's a while since I've done the pearl, but I can do it. I'm going to start off by showing you how I cast on and uh, we'll go from there. So the first change that I'm going to suggest to you is the way that you cast on. So I know a lot of people do use the long tail cast on and my cast on is a variation of that. But what I also see is lots of ways of estimating how long your tail should be. So if you wrap it round 10 times, you measure that amount of yarn and then you can double it or triple it or 10 times it for 100. And it's all about estimating how long your tail end should be. But you, you don't need to do any of that. But it's usually your main, your main yarn that you're casting on with. So why don't you just get 
two balls of yarn. I got one here and I'll get one there and I'll get both of the ends together. I've actually done with this with the middle and the end of the same ball. It doesn't matter, you just need two different lengths of wool, no measuring. Give yourself a longish tail and then just put a knot in it, like that. And now we're ready to start here. What it means is that you've got a working yarn here, attached to this ball here. And you've got a working yarn attached to this ball here. And so it doesn't matter which one you use for your main cast on part, you're not going to run out. Because if these are two balls of your background yarn, you've got two full balls of yarn. And at the end, when you've knitted your jumper or your sweater or your cardigan, you can just undo this little knot. It's just a simple overhand knot. You just take that out and you can use the tails to either weave them in and weave them through. You can use them to sew up the seam if, you, if you're doing a flat knitted piece and you need a seam to sew. Um, they might be in the steek, so it won't matter at all if they're in the steek. Either way, you just leave yourself enough to sew up with if that's what you're going to do. But in the end, there's no need to estimate anything. You've got two great big long lengths now, and that's fine. So a long tail cast on, I'll do that first, the normal long tail. And so I need a slip knot. So I'm just going to, I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to make this open like a V here. I'll move that out of the way so everything can be as clear as possible. So I'm picking up that, weaving my fingers through so I can hold that tension and I'm using my little finger and my other, my last two fingers and my thumb to hold the other ball. And then I can make a slip knot just by coming under here and doing that. And that's perfectly fine as a first slip knot. Got your tails to hold alongside your needle, and so that's the traditional I don't know what you'd call it that you start a long tail with. And I'm just going to show you the long tail so you can see the difference between the way I do it. So, a traditional long tail, you're going to come over to this front of your thumb, and your needle goes through it and sort of picks up a, a loop of yarn. And it goes over to the index finger yarn and it picks up a stitch and it just sort of comes back through there and you drop the, that loop, pull it with your thumb and you've got another stitch on your needle. So I'll do that again. So I come to the front of my thumb and take that yarn. I go over to my finger, index finger and take that yarn and come back through this thumb loop. And you can see that the, this yarn here is actually wrapping around to make that stitch. And I can pull that in and show you how it tightens the stitch. I'm going to do a little few of them so in the end you can see the difference. So this is in real time. It just gets to be a fluid movement. And this is the cast on I used for years after... I learned how to cast on the way my grandma did, which was by knitting the stitch and putting the stitch on the needle all the time. So how many have I done there? Two, six, eight, ten. Okay, I've got ten stitches and I can show you there what they look like. Got a nice little, almost like a little plaited edge. So the difference in the way I do it now is that I do use what's called an old Norwegian cast on. Well, that's what I learnt it as anyway, an old Norwegian. And it just puts one extra twist into your long tail. And that extra twist makes your cast on quite stretchy. And it gives a very neat edge along here. And so I set up for the same long tail, exactly the same. But this time, I'm going to try and take my hand round so you can see it. Instead of picking up the front loop here, I'm going to go under both of them. And then the point of my needle is going to come through the middle and pick up a loop. So that loop is already crossed. I'll show you that again. 
I'm going to go not here I'm going to go under both of those and then bring the point of my needle back through the middle in essence all I'm doing is picking up the back of the yarn and I go back over to my index finger just like the normal one and pick up that and you sort of have to bring the loop through that crossed fit and that's how I was shown how to do it you just tighten up as normal go under both back through the middle across to your index finger come back through this crossed loop and I found that a bit awkward and so I just slightly modified it and so I go under the pair of them back through the middle over to the index but as I go over to the index I drop my thumb here and by dropping my thumb I open that loop up so it's not crossed anymore it's the same stitch it's the same loop but it's uncrossed and as I pick up the index finger strand it just can come through that loop without any problem and then it's the same tightening motion I'll show you that again without me whichering on under them both back through the middle over to the index and drop your thumb pick up the loop make your stitch under both back through the middle over to the index and drop your thumb back through the middle tighten your stitch I'll show you that in how quick it is really it's just one extra twist to what you might normally be doing And when I show you the stitches, you can see where I stopped there. There's the stitches. I'll do how many have I done there? Two, four, six. Oh, I have done ten again. I must have done it by accident. So there's the original long tail cast on with sort of the plait here. And the twisted one, the twisted Norwegian one, has this extra little stitch here where you can see it's got twisted again and it just makes for a neater a neater stitch a neater edge and when you've got your garment it's quite a stretchy edge so it's definitely worth learning that extra twist under two back through the middle drop your thumb pick up the loop tighten your stitch and that dropping the thumb bit it might seem awkward at first, but you soon get into the hang of it as, as you bring as you bring this needle over to the index finger, your thumb can already drop, so it opens that loop up there, and then your needle just comes through it and then drop drop to tighten so that's the first thing done. I'm going to knit a few rows and then I'm going to show you another. Another nice little tip that you might not know. I've made a little a little swatch here with a bit of um, stocking stitch on. So my second thing that I'm going to show you, I actually thought I'd invented this. And I was most disappointed to realise that I hadn't. Um, and that is, I knit backwards as well as forwards. Now why would anybody want to knit backwards? Well, it saves you having to do the purl stitch. And purling does not bother me at all, um, not in the slightest. I don't do that much of it anymore because I knit mainly in the round. I still do have to purl. If I was doing a bubble, I'd want to purl back. If I was doing short rows on socks, you need to purl back. Even if you're doing your sock in the round, you still need to purl those short rows. So I've got to the end of my row of knitting. And instead of turning around and doing a purl, it was all the turning round that used to bother me. It's because in the 80s, I did plenty Aaron cardigans and it was always bubbles. And it used to drive me nuts <laughs> turning, turning these big cardigans or jumpers around and having to 
turn round to do the bubbles and so I started to just knit backwards. So to knit backwards I'm just going to insert my left hand needle into the back of the loop of the first stitch. I'm holding the yarn just in, in the English way. I've got it underneath like that and so I just flick my finger up and put the, the yarn over the top of that needle and pull through. I'm doing it so slowly that's why right there and pull it through and there I've just purled a stitch but I haven't purled it I've knitted backwards. So the next one I'm going to go into the back of the stitch flick my finger over pull through back of the stitch finger over pull through it's as simple as that it's not even hard and it's the perfectly same knit stitch from the front. If I hold it up, I'll see if I can do it higher without knocking the camera over. So I'm knitting into the back of the stitch. I flick my finger and pull through. Back of the stitch, flick my finger, pull through. In fact, you can see the stitch lying, waiting. If I lift my finger up there and I look through, can you see that? There's the stitch just waiting to be pulled and off it goes. So this is really handy if you're doing a short row because then if I was doing this on a sock heel I'd have knit backwards however many stitches. I pull the, pull the yarn to the front, slip that stitch, pull the yarn to the back, slip that stitch, knit. And there I have done the, the backwards, the, the short row. And I can knit all the way back. So maybe I need to stop there. I can pull through, slip the stitch, go back, slip that stitch. But I'm already set up to knit backwards. Into the back, flick my finger through. And all of a sudden your short rows are not, you're not having to turn your work all the time. You just flick, flick your hand. And there I am back to where... Sorry, so that's the that would be my next short row. Flick that through, slip the stitch, flick back, slip the stitch, ready to knit. I'll just knit I'll just knit across. I'll just knit those slips anyway because I'm going to do a bit of fair iron now. But you can see how quick that is. And even if you're knitting a jumper in the flat, you very soon build up quite a speed of knitting backwards it's still quicker than purling and so many people have issues with purling tension this shouldn't this should negate that because you're not having to purl it's more like the knit stitch just made with the other with the other um with the needle in the back if you i'll just do i'll just do this i'll show you one more thing about the knitting backwards. So obviously your stitches are getting made and the front of the stitch lies slightly to the right of the back of the stitch and if your stitch is on the other way round then it's twisted like that. That would be a twisted stitch it have to be knitting into the back to untwist it again. So what can happen when you're very first learning how to knit backwards, I'll just do a few more so you can see, is that you put the yarn the other way around. So you go into the back of the stitch and it seems easier to do that. And it will make the stitch just the same, wrapping from the underneath. So instead of coming over the top, that you wrap clockwise around it instead. And all it is, all that happens, is that your stitch is twisted. You come to the end of your row and you can see that the stitch is twisted on the needle. But it doesn't really matter because all you need to do when you do your knit row is just knit into the back of the stitch and it untwists them automatically. And you have a perfect row. So although it's good practice to lift your needle that way, lift your yarn that way. If you do it the other way and you come to a twisted stitch, 
It isn't any problem. You just untwist them as you knit forward. So I hope that's been a helpful thing. As I say, when I first found out I hadn't invented that, I was quite miffed because I thought I'd actually invented a knitting way. So we get to the main event, how to do no strand fair isle. And I did a little sample, but the the yarns I've chosen are not quite right together. This is quite thick comparison to that one. So I'm going to show you the basic method and then I'm going to swap to my actual knitting to show you it in action. So you need to be able to do continental and English style. And I think if you already knit English style, and I'll show you my technique just so you know how I particularly knit. So I was taught to do knitting with big long needles under my arm. And it took me ages to transition to a circular needle because I just couldn't get the hang of holding the needle all the time because I was used to the needle being shoved under my right armpit and then all I did was hold the, hold the yarn. However, once I got used to it, I, I don't have a problem. And so I hold my, tension my yarn just through my fingers like that. I don't go wrapping things round or anything like that because I think it makes it a bit tight, but maybe that's just me. So I just, just do that and it goes over my forefinger. And I keep my yarn right up at my knuckle end and I keep everything close to the points because that's how I was taught, close to the points. And you shove all your, all your, your stitches on your left needle get shoved up to the point so that as you knit, they just sort of automatically come to the point. And you just pull this finger forward and you never have to let go and do this. And I think it's all about economy of motion. And I'm just going to knit back on there just because I haven't introduced the second yarn yet or showed you how to do the continental. I think if you're a continent if you're an English knitter, then continental should be so easy to pick up because all of the work is done with your right hand. And I think if you're a continental knitter already, it, uh, it possibly is a little more difficult to pick up English because there's more motion that you do. So I'm just knitting back across here, just showing you that backwards knitting in action. In through the back, flick over and off. Doing it a bit on the side to get it under the camera. It's taken me a while to get into the right position, so I'm afraid if it goes out of focus a bit or I wander off camera, it's just because I'm not used to it. So to do continental knitting, for those of you who need to pick that skill up to do the no strand fair isle, I'll just put a couple of stitches on there. I hold the yarn exactly the same, just over, under and over my fingers, and it's round my forefinger knuckle. I have my stitches bunched up here. This is ready, and then my finger is really close to the to the needle. It's not way out here where I need to make a big effort. I, I hold everything really close. And then as you go into that stitch and you pull it open, I'm going to clear this so I can show it up against the, against the white. As you go into that and pull it open, that yarn is just lying there waiting for you to grab a hold of it. And it sort of just comes up there straight away. And that is continental knitting. It's two movements. It's into the stitch, grab the stitch. Into the stitch, grab the stitch. And it is actually as quick as that. And you can see how little motion I'm using on my right hand. And I think that's how you can, you do pick up speed and you do, you, you don't get um finger pain or well, at least or well, i don't get finger pain um and it must be awful if you do and you want to be knitting and you can't do it um but i think if you're an english knitter and you haven't tried continental it won't take you very long to pick that up because 
try and hold it a bit nearer again and I'll do it up close to the camera as I can. It literally is open the stitch and there's the there's the stitch there just waiting for you. Open the stitch and pick it up. Open the stitch, pick it up. Open the stitch, pick it up. Okay, so I'm set up, I've got both my colours. I'm going to use the accent colour in my left hand and knit continental with that one and I'm going to have my main colour in my right hand and I'm going to knit English in that colour and it is sort of good practice I think to have your main colour always knit with your right that'll be the easiest because there'll be the most stitches it's the easiest way of weaving and so to do it I'm going to so I'm going to just do a long line of it and I'm going to carry this accent colour along the back of the blue. So I'll bunch those bunch those stitches up a bit and I want to just knit blue but I don't want any strands. I'm going to keep holding it and turning it so you can see. So I'm going to put my needle in to knit and I'm just going to knit that stitch as normal. This is where we start to weave because to no strand you're doing a weaving motion on every other stitch that you do. So I've done a proper normal knit stitch, this stitch gets woven and what I need to do is catch this, this yarn in and the way to do that is just to bring my, bring my finger up and as I bring my finger up I can knit that stitch just like normal and just knit the stitch and it means that that purple yarn got caught can you see there the yarn's caught so if I put my finger down again that means when I go to do the next normal knit stitch I'm actually catching the yarn again because I'm going over it and so I make another normal stitch so this one I'm going to bring the yarn up again and I don't bring it in front of the points like that. It was just really to show you how to do it. I just bring my finger up and I make the knit stitch. And then I make sure the finger's down and I do a normal knit stitch. And you just carry on like that across however much you need to strand. Bring your finger up. Make sure your finger's relaxed. Bring your finger up. Make sure your finger's relaxed. And there's no purple showing there, and on the back it's been woven in on every stitch, and you get these little sort of V shapes coming where the purple yarn is travelling. Now, I find to weave in like this it ends up being really quick, but what it does is it evens out the knitting, and so you don't get any floats to pull. You don't get these stitches bunched up while you're pulling it tight because every single stitch something is happening to that accent yarn. So I can see here I need to I need to wrap it with my finger up. So I'll just pull my finger up, make the stitch. And as my finger goes down, that stitch is already that purple is already down. And I just go and knit a normal stitch. Bring my finger up, knit the stitch, take my finger down, normal stitch. I'll just work the whole way along here, just so you can see how easy that is. So that's taking your accent colour across the back of your main colour yarn. Finger up, finger down. If I turn it round, there it is. Ignore this, this is what I've been doing with my other bits. I'm ready, set up to now strand the main yarn across the back of the contrast yarn. And this is a bit more of a funny stitch, it's a bit more tricky, but it, it isn't difficult once you start. So I'm going to start off by just doing a normal knit stitch with my with the continental style and just going into the blue picking that purple up and there's a normal knit stitch but now I need to strand this across the back of the purple 
And to do that, I need to catch this in somehow. And the way to do it is, I'm going to do my knit stitch. I knit with the blue. I then knit with that colour. I take the blue off again. And I pull my purple through. You can actually see that loop there. But when I pull it in, it just goes into the background. And so then I'm going to do an, a normal knit stitch. And now another weaving knit stitch. So in, knit with the background, knit with the contrast, take the background stitch out, pull the purple through. Nothing to show on the front. I'll go right along the row doing that. So then we do a normal one without weaving. You only weave every other stitch. Here's a weaving stitch into the knit, knit with the background, knit with the purple. Take the background off again, pull your stitch through, a normal stitch. Knit with the background, knit with the purple, take the background out, pull your stitch through, no, normal stitch. Knit with the background, knit with the purple, take the stitch out, normal stitch. There. Knit with the background, knit with the purple, take the background out, pull your stitch through. And then, that means I've now got a row of the purple, but the blue has been woven in all the way along the back. Now I'm going to knit in groups of five now, just to show you how it works. So I'm going to do one stitch in background, the next stitch in background. I'm going to lift that yarn and come through. I'm going to drop my needle, drop my yarn and come through. Lift my yarn and do the stitch. Drop the yarn and do the stitch. So there's five background. I'll go on to five contrasts and I need to strand my background. So the first stitch I'll just make as normal. I'll we'll pick that stitch up. Here's my first woven one. Into the blue, round with the background, round with the contrast. Take the background off, pull my stitch through, then make a normal stitch. Next one. Round with the blue, round with the purple, take the purple off, pull the stitch through, and a normal one. I can go back to the background again. One stitch. Second one, lift up. Third one, go down. Fourth one, lift up. Fifth one, finger down. Back to the first is a normal stitch. This stitch is blue, purple. Take the blue off, bring the stitch through. A normal stitch. This one, blue, purple. Take the blue off, a normal stitch. Uh, sorry, bring the stitch through. And a normal stitch. I hear, I hear people going about yarn dominance in Fair Isle. And it took me a while to do some research onto what it was because I don't think I ever had yarn dominance. And I did a little practice here to think, well, if I change my hands and use the main colour in my other hand and the contrast in this, would it make any difference? Because they say it de depends on how, how far your yarn has to go around. And in my experience there, we'll just, I went wrong on the pattern there, so we'll just look at these two. This was done, this one was done with the main colour in my right hand. This one was done with my main colour in the left hand. And I can't see any difference at all on those. So I, I think the no strand technique, it, it evens out your yarn tension. It makes the stitches with both hands. There's no stranding to make a stitch look bigger because there's no spare yarn at the back that would make those stitches look bigger which is what they always go on about the yarn dominance with. Now I may be wrong, this might be, you know, somebody who knows better than me might, might know different, but to me, 
you, to do the most strand means you get rid of yarn dominance, you even out your tension, you end up not pulling because every single stitch is doing something, even if it's just wrapping up and wrapping down, it's actually working along, so you tend not to pull it tight, whereas a, stra whereas a float is easy to pull it tight if your stitches are not um, spread out. So I'm going to show you that in my actual knitting. At the end, for those of you who don't knit in the round, I think I can actually remember how to purl. This is um, James, uh, this is a Shetland Spindrift, this is Paprika and this is Camel. And the pattern that it is at the moment is 5 Camel, 2 Paprika, 7 Camel, 2 Paprika. 5 camel 2 paprika so that's what I'm doing so I'm set up ready to do my ready to do five of the background and obviously I need to carry this paprika colour across so here we go so I'll bunch them up I'm set up at the edge of my needles and I'm ready for did I say five five camel I'll pull the camera in a bit I'm worried about it going blurry really, but I hope that'll be fine. And I'll try and hold my knitting up so you can see what happens. So I'm ready for five camel. So I'm going to just do the first as a normal stitch. One. The next one, I'm lifting my finger. Two. The next one, I drop my finger. Three. The next one, I lift my finger. Four. The next one, I drop my finger. Five. Then I need two of this paprika. Just do a normal stitch for the first one. The second one needs to be woven. So I'm going to knit with the camel, knit with the paprika, take the camel off, pull my stitch through. And now I need seven of the camel. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then back to two of that one. One normal, one woven. So if I keep knitting at my normal speed, you can see how quickly it actually is. And it's not much movements. And... And I'll show you just if I wanted to do more of the contrast, weaving back the contrast. So I'll just start and do it that way. I can always take this out. So I'll just go, okay, I need to do more of them. I just keep going like that. And every other stitch, it is as quick as that. And you just get into a rhythm. Then I go back to the background again, and then I'm up and down with my finger. And in that way, you get a really nice, even fabric on the front. And just as lovely a one on the back. I've come back over to the purple and blue, because I thought it was a little easier to, um, to demonstrate it with the, the thicker wool. So I'm set up ready to do purl and to no strand the contrast along the back of the main colour is the easiest bit to do and it's all about the up and down finger again. I'm set up so I need to go into purl and then pull my finger down here and purl the stitch. And on the next stitch, I go to purl, I keep my finger up and I purl the stitch. And you can go across the row, pulling your finger down, letting your finger go up. And that, in that way, you are weaving the contrast or your left hand yarn over the back of the main colour or the right hand yarn. I'm trying, I'm doing this slowly. 
not not just for your benefit because it's it's so long since I've done this but that is how to do it and you can see I've got the little V shapes and on the front it should look fine which it does I haven't got any any bother on there so it's a bit more difficult just because I don't pearl continental at all I, I, I knit backwards I don't ever pearl continental anymore so if I wanted to carry the background colour across the contrast colour and here we are ready for it so there's that one woven through so it's the same knit then unknit so I'm going to do my first stitch as normal so the continental pearl is a bit more tricky you go in you pull the yarn down and take the stitch back and so to do the weaving one I'm going to pull in I'm going to take the the main colour the backwards round the needle then I'm going to make the stitch I'm going to take that one off again and pull my purl stitch through I go back to do a normal purl stitch and then I do a woven purl stitch so I go into the into the stitch take the main colour the wrong way around the needle take the, the colour I'm using the proper way around the needle and then undo that one and pull my stitch through and then do a normal stitch this will definitely take longer to get fluid with so the wrong way with the main colour, the correct way with the contrast colour, the main colour comes back off and the stitch gets made and then this a normal stitch. Once more, the main colour goes backwards, the contrast colour goes forwards, the main colour comes off the stitch gets made and then a normal stitch gets made I'll just put that one in for the end and as you can see I've still not got any blue showing there I've not got any purple showing there but on the back both yarns are at the end and they've both been woven in let me know if there's any anything else you would like to know or if there's anything I could have done differently or shown more clearly. So obviously I'm not used to doing a knitting tutorial. It's taken me a while to actually film it so that you could see what I was trying to show you. But in the end, it is worth picking up this technique because it is just so and, and it's not to do with quickness at all i'm not somebody who wants to race or, or win races on anything but you just get more fluid at doing it and more i think it's just a very satisfying way of knitting knowing that those yarn floats are not in your way knowing that your knitting is really even and I can just do the other one and it's it's just looks nice and my my stranded cardigan that I made originally it, it still looks nice and I'm still wearing that after sort of 40 years that, that it's been knit but it's nice to learn new techniques and find other things that you can do and I always think it's what, it's what keeps me going is being able to learn new things. But this is something I learned a long time ago. Anyway, that is it. I hope you'll have a try and really let, let me know if you have success with it. Expect just to take it easy for the beginning and all of a sudden you'll just get that smooth, fluid motion and there's no limit to what you can do then you can strand across however many however many um stitches that you want to because 
even if there's just two stitches like there was on here like two i still weave i never ever strand even just two stitches that every every other stitch gets woven and you just fall into that habit of doing it um i can't recommend it highly enough really i, de I definitely would never go back to stranding ever and once you once you can do that nicely i don't think you'll want to go back to it either well i hope that that was interesting for you all i'm going to carry on with some knitting now because um i'm still knitting away on this jumper and i hope you found that helpful definitely the twisted cast on's a really nice one to learn how to do and Knitting backwards, I bet you weren't expecting me to show you how to knit backwards. But that's a game changer, especially if you're somebody who knits a lot of socks or likes to knit iron and you're knitting bobbles a lot. Um, you never have to turn your work again, which sort of stops all that heaving around. Just, just knit them back, just knit them backwards, and you'll find that it's a pleasure to do them. And the no strand, I hope I've made that clear enough. And the only thing I'm a bit um, disappointed with is the fact that I was struggling to do the pearl way because it's just so long since I had to do the no strand in the pearl because I've knit in the round for so long now um, but I hope that's uh, I hope that's all been interesting and um, yeah send me a send me a like if you liked it send me a comment let me know if you have a try and you feel it's a success uh, let me know because I'll be interested to know and if you try it and you absolutely hate it and you think you can never pick it up let me know as well I'll be still interested to find out uh, how you get on with it but that's the way I have knit for a long 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 time and um, yeah it's a it's a good one I think anyway I'm going to just say bye from Marion's World happy knitting and stitching and crafting and um, I'll see you next time Thanks everyone. Bye.